Uh, hi, everyone. So we have uh, traditionally held a uh, sort of an AMA panel uh, with, the, with the CentOS board at these events. We did it last year. We're going to do it again this year. Um, I have kind of some questions primed first, and then we'll open it up to the audience. You all can ask whatever questions. Um, I don't think this will take, you know, we had like uh, 45 minutes for it on the schedule. I don't think it'll take that. So um, anyway, we'll, we'll kick this off. We have four members of the CentOS board of directors here. Uh, there, are, there are 10 members of it, but four were able to make it here to Brussels this year. Um, so I guess I'll just let you all do an introductions. So why don't you all just tell me, because uh, I don't know your names. <laughs> <laughs> tell me your name, uh, like where you work and what you do. Uh, and uh, just for fun, what's your uh, favorite snack to have on an airplane or train or however you travel? Uh, why don't we, I'll start this one with Mr. Extra Beard and move towards Amy. You told me you did not know my name. <laughs> <laughs> Just your last name. Hi, I'm Brian Exelbeard. Um, I work for Red Hat as a business strategist in the RHEL business unit. So I dream up ideas of where I think Red Hat should be going with its Linux product in like 18 to 36 months. But as a part of that work, I actually sit on the CentOS board as the Red Hat liaison to the CentOS project. And that's part of our way of trying to ensure that the community can move forward with its own initiatives and Red Hat can easily bring initiatives to the board or react to things that come to the board. Um, and as a brief clarity of governance, I don't have any magical vetoes or anything else. I'm just literally the person on the board who when I speak, that's the opinion of Red Hat. I don't offer my personal opinion in board meetings. So most board meetings, if you watch them, you will see me doing this. <laughs> because Red Hat doesn't have an opinion on whatever's under discussion. Um, and so, oh yes, favorite snack. Um, I had a long story, but I'll just say Lotus cookies, the, the little crackers that we have outside, speculos. Red Hat, <laughs> Red Hat has no favorite snack. Hello, uh, I'm Thomas from CERN. So you can't pronounce my name, so it doesn't matter. Thomas from CERN is fine. We are trying to, um, to accelerate particles in a big machine. And uh, this guy at the bottom hired me uh, like almost uh, 12 years ago, something like that, to work on scientific Linux. 13, okay, to work on scientific Linux. And after we transitioned from scientific Linux to CentOS, and I've been involved uh, in the infrastructure. Thanks, Fabian, that uh, helped me to know everybody. And uh, after that, uh, I'm now on the board of directors and I'm holding the secretary job. So I'm sending a few emails around uh, to tell you that uh, there will be a next board meeting and sometimes I forget, so I send it late, sorry about that. Uh, but uh, remind me. And uh, I'm trying to keep uh, up to date with what is going on in different community, uh, infra, uh, hyperscale SIG and uh, pretty much it. And uh, favorite snack, this is controversial, is uh, Swiss chocolate in Swiss Airlines, uh, Belgium, <laughs> so maybe, maybe Brussels Airlines have better chocolate, I'll, I'll try. Uh, I mind. Hi, I'm Davide, I'm a production engineer at Meta, I work on the Linux user space team. Um, Meta has a lot of machines, they all run CentOS, so there's a vested interest there. Uh, my team works mostly on open source stuff, uh, so we take care of um, making sure that all of the things that we run at Meta, uh, especially around the low level system user space, we have a good relationship with the Upstream project that the work we do doesn't get lost in the bowels of the company, but actually goes doing something useful for the world, hopefully. Um, favorite snack on a plane is the popcorn they have on United Domestic Flies sometimes. Hello, I am Amy. I work at Red Hat as well as Bex. Um, but I work in hybrid platforms, so I actually have nothing to do with the RHEL BU. Um, I specialize in OpenStack and am the unofficial official community architect for the RDO. So I came into being on the board of directors through the cloud SIG. Um, my background is open source and communities, um, and I serve on several other open source boards of directors. And I've been a long time sent to us user in home labs and so on and so forth. So it was interesting to get back involved with the community through cloud and to help to bring some of the openness from my other communities into CentOS, which is what I'm trying to do. My favorite airline is probably 
these scone box on British Airways because Whoa. at Flock, we became addicted to scones with clotted cream. Those were really good. Those were really good. Yeah. I, I guess I'll, I'll go for completeness. Uh, I'm Sean, and I am not on the board of directors. Uh, but I am employed by Red Hat as the community architect, so I, I sit in on all the board meetings um, and just help facilitate with everything. So, Oh, and I, I really, my backpack is always full of these snack bars. The brand is Zone. I love them. Uh, and I hope I get a kickback for the product placement on YouTube here. Um, okay, so this is my office space moment of uh, what would you say you do here? So what, uh, what is it about what you do that makes you even want to serve on this board? Uh, and, and what kind of stuff do you do for the board? I know you, you touched on it in the last question, but I'll have you elaborate. Uh, and I'll start this one with Tomas, Tomas from CERN. So, yeah, what I said before, I think uh, for me, uh, we'd like to serve, like keeping track of what the community needs and trying to bring this uh, point to the board. And if we forget something, trying to get uh, feedback. And uh, again, we are looking at how we want to do this infrastructure, uh, SIG, all the, the thing around that. And that's something that, uh, as I come from the infrastructure side uh, since the beginning, it's something I really care about. So I think. Uh, this is something I'm trying to, to follow up. And uh, uh, yeah, I think uh, the challenge is always to stay up to date with everything that is going on. Because uh, as you see this morning, there's with the different meetups, like uh, alternative image, uh, hyperscale, there's a lot of things to follow up. And I think uh, this is kind of uh, one of the things that uh, you need to, to follow up and be passionate about what is going on in this ecosystem. Uh, I think it's quite important. Um, for me, I, I wear a lot of different hats in this, in this community. Um, a lot of the things on the board end up being trying to, get, trying to get things moving along and trying to get things unstuck and helping people that want to do something in CentOS that don't quite know how to do it or they aren't quite sure how to get things moving forward. Uh, we've seen a fair amount of that with Hyperscale where we tried to do a bunch of things that we were some of the first trying to do it and there was a lot of work working with various parts of the project to try and figure out what is the best way to can do things and how can we do this in a way that another six can leverage these and like get, get the process set up in a way that is generally useful. So like I mentioned, I came through Cloud SIG onto the board of directors and I think it's important for all the SIGs to be represented and also try, one of the things I'm trying to do is make it easier for people to get involved in the project. Um, and during a recent work trip to Brno, I met with the docs team and how we could like get people to contribute to docs because we always need docs and docs is always a great place for people to get involved. So I'm hoping that we can come up and we're meeting on Monday to work on docs and other things, but how can we do better onboarding? How can we make it easier for people to contribute? Um, the board has been working on what does success mean for CentOS and we're still working on trying to get the metrics of what's the number of contributors now, how many companies are involved now, so that we know that if we get three more contributors, does that mean success or do we need 10 more to be successful? So the idea be behind some of the things that I'm working on is how we can better onboard people and grow the community. So um, my role is a little bit different, as I've mentioned, but I didn't like spring forth fully formed from Shadow Man's head, like Minerva from <laughs> Zeus. Um, I actually participated in the CentOS project as an engineer when I was doing some engineering work for Red Hat. I've made contributions to the project um, before all of this, and the role that I held at Red Hat right before the one that I have now was uh, as the F cake. It's the community human for Fedora. It's basically the Sean equivalent in that community. And as a part of that, I had done a lot of work with Matthew, who was heckling me in the back, um, and, and had kind of realized how these projects could benefit from a Red Hat voice. I'm the second Red Hat liaison to the project, but when we changed the person, 
we made the decision that the liaison would no longer bring their personal voice to the table because it cleaned up a lot of the communications and the questions. And you didn't have to wonder, hey, did I ask Red Hat that question or did I ask Bex that question? Um, and it became very clear where information was coming from. So this is an important thing for me and the board scrutinized me just as they would any potential new member. And I'm hoping that that's actually a standard that we're setting in the future for whomever comes after me as the liaison and that other companies and projects will look at this as an idea for how to interface when it's appropriate. Cool. You already talked. Yep, you were the last one. So um, we, as I said, there's, there are 10 board members. Now the way the, uh, the board works is um, Members or directors of the board are appointed by the board, uh, but there's an open nomination process. Uh, and they can serve for as long as they want. Uh, we do a yearly check-in. I'll send them an email and say, do you intend to continue serving? And then they all send me an email back saying yes. Uh, but this year, uh, one of our board members uh, has decided to step down. And so we are, uh, we will be doing a new appointment. Uh, and the nominations are open right now. There's a, an email out to CentOS Devel a couple of weeks ago, um, and they'll stay open for at least, according to the bylaws, I think 31 days from the, that email. Um, so we're accepting nominations. You can nominate yourself or nominate somebody else. Uh, you can check CentOS Devel for that. Um, so since we are in the middle of uh, the process of appointing a new board member, uh, let's talk about what a board member might be kind of, a new board member might be getting themselves into. So like, how much does this add to your workload? You're all already doing stuff with, you know, sent to us the project outside of the board, but how much, how much extra workload are you taking on by being on the board? And I'll start this one with Davida. Sure. Um, I would say if you're already involved in this community, it's not a significant amount of added work. Uh, in, it's one meeting a month uh, for, for the board meeting, it's keeping an eye on the mailing list, uh, it's being on a private matrix room and being able, but most of the communications are async, so it's, it's, fairly, it's fairly easy to, to do this work and follow, follow the threads that are going on at your own pace, and then it's the occasional working, reviewing documents, proposing things and like, but a lot of it is the amount of work to do depends on how much you want to put into it, so if there are specific things you would like to champion, obviously that, that entails doing more work on your own, but in general I would say this is not a heavy work position. And I just want to clarify one thing. Davida mentioned the private matrix room. And basically what we were talking about doing was having working sessions. But we couldn't get everyone together to have working sessions. And a lot of times it's, the so everyone knows that after the board meeting the next week we tend to have an office hours. And a lot of times it's just me and Sean. So the idea behind the matrix room was for us to be able to have additional async communication that perhaps was more visible to people than just their email. So it's a way to increase communication within the board so we can make decisions faster. Um, Davida gave a pretty good overview of what the general job is and commitment for the board. I just want to add it as the chair, what I do is also before the board meetings, I go through all the issues and see what need, what we need to discuss, what hasn't been updated lately. Um, recently, I went through and assigned every board issue to someone. And the idea behind, I randomly pick, some, pick, you know, like maybe up to five, depending on what the agenda is looking like, so that we can then go through. And now it's like, did you update your tickets? Have you put notes in? Okay, after we've had this discussion, make sure you go in and put your notes in. So it's a lot of product and project management as part of being on the board. Um, I also go and do a little more because I do enjoy commu community, architect community architecting. So I help Sean with you know, decisions on the event and helping to run the event that normally wouldn't be a chair position or anything that's expected, but I enjoy doing it so I give him a hand. So I'll, I'll take the question in a slightly different direction and I'll say four to six hours a month. Um, and I'm basing that on the work that I'm doing as the liaison, whether that's attending the meeting, um, 
actively trying to make questions to Red Hat Sean's problem instead of my problem, um, going back in and discussing things inside of Red Hat to get the Red Hat consensus and opinion together around things that I couldn't somehow hand off to Sean, um, and those things. So like, that's probably like a number for you to put in your head if you're thinking about board service. And I gave a bit of a range there because at least for the kind of work that I do, um, it's very cyclical. So like some months it's an hour or two and some months it's 12, 20 hours because that was the nature of the work. I suspect that um, you all would say that, especially like with tickets and stuff, and I'm putting words in your mouth so you don't get to speak again, but you get to correct me. Um, it, it's probably more consistent because I don't usually get assigned tickets unless they're a red hat question. Because again, I don't want to drive a process through and accidentally make somebody think that Red Hat cared that this specific ticket must come out this specific way when that wasn't Red Hat's opinion. Uh, what else can I add? Um, yeah, uh, as I said, uh, being involved, uh, it takes time because you are following a lot of different channels. So I think uh, it's, not, uh, it's not like crazy time, but still, you need to look after uh, different kind of communication. And as a secretary, a uh, few times a month, I have to uh, to stay awake until 10 p.m., which is very hard when you have a kid. So this is one of the things uh, with Bex uh, from Europe. We try to accommodate uh, all those time zones. So this is uh, maybe the only negative point, I would say. Uh, like, you need to be aware if you are applying from Europe, the meeting a bit late. But apart from that, uh, otherwise, uh, the minutes, uh, we are trying to do collective minutes during the meeting. So in general, there's not much editing. And as we publish the video now, the, it's kind of fine. And uh, I think nobody complain about it. So please do if you want improvement, because uh, we didn't receive a lot of uh, query for, the, for improvement. And I like uh, as well if you want to tell us to do something better because this is uh, we are here to serve the community and so yeah please do do ask uh, stuff and don't mind uh, if you have questions send me something and i will try to get all the people uh, for the next meeting together so great yeah. time zones are hard we do span currently u.s west coast uh which the davida is to central european time so uh, it's all very convenient for me in u.s eastern time because i'm right in the middle um, okay, so just I have just one more question, and then we can open it up. Um, I just want to know what uh, what area of the community uh, do you wish we could put more focus or more resources onto? And I'll start this one with Amy. Yeah, I've kind of mentioned already. I'm big into onboarding and getting people involved. So making it easier for people to get involved in some way, and we're still working out on the best way to do that. Like I mentioned. Docs is super easy. Um, the real t docs team were very, very open to a, us, you know, making things. Um, I mentioned like a quick start gu guide, how to get started, how to do your, you know, really quick, how to do an install. They're like, that sounds great. We are working also on changing our infrastructure and our wiki and our docs. So we haven't even started looking at that process. But onboarding, I always think, is you know the most important thing you can do for a community. Go do cool stuff. Go do more cool stuff. Go get me involved in very uncomfortable conversations with my VP, where he says to me, they're doing cool stuff. Why is that not happening in product? So please, go do more cool stuff. Yeah, and a lot of cool stuff is happening and even me following a bit everything we don't know uh, that it's happening so as well this is I, I, I go back to Amy point uh, being uh, more open on communication trying to commit more and uh, if you have ideas on how we can uh, disseminate, disseminate more information to more people uh, let us know because I think this is what is important and uh, that's it yeah I think having clarity around which areas are open and available for contributions is very helpful. This project is a bit special in that there's areas of the project that aren't necessarily easy to contribute to because they happen on the other side of the wall inside Red Hat. And there's areas of the project that happen outside and having clarity on which is which, which processes are available, how can people help even if they don't work for Red Hat, which I don't, by the way, um, I think is really useful. And it is something that I think we've been getting better over the years. Like at least 
remembering how it was even two or three years ago, it definitely feels a lot a lot more straightforward these days and with stream and with all the improvement we've been making release over release. That's all I have. Uh, and we have 16 minutes until I promised I would make the board shut up. So uh, who has any questions out in the audience? So for me, FOSDEM is like a new year, and I always use this time to like reflect on the past year and think about what's doing next. So my question is, uh, do you have any kind of goal setting for what the project would uh, need to achieve in a year, any ideas in that direction? Yeah, maybe uh, th th we are drafting a document in th this uh, idea of what, uh, how do you want uh, to, to measure success, what is success, and how we want to move forward. So we are working on it, and there's a lot of good ideas in this document. So I think we should concentrate on, on, on achieving the goal we, we wrote uh, in this draft. It's still a draft, right? So yes, we're still me missing the metrics. So a number one thing is to get those metrics so we are measurable, so we can see success, so we can see if we're not making those metrics, how what areas we need to work on so then we can improve in them. And I think a big one also is what we're doing on Monday is the documentation, the website, um, so that, you know, it's a very common fact. We have SIG information in three different places. That is confusing. We need to streamline our process so that when someone's coming to the website to look for information, they look one place, it's all consistent, and they can get that information. Is it a pony question? Oh. <laughs> Amy Weaver. No, it's not Amy. We might need to take that in as a side discussion. <laughs> no, um, I have a question just with the CentOS project collaborating with more open source projects like Fedora, Rocky, Alma, um, et cetera. Where has that benefited the project most, do you see, in recent times? And if maybe you haven't seen that, where could you see that benefit happening in the short term? I've, my goal for working with the other projects is collaboration, to get new contributors, to have common processes, especially with Fedora. Where can we work together so we're not doing the same thing twice? Um, so that's a big one, and I think joining at Flock this past year and, and in the future has been a great first step, getting those relationships that are so important. Um, and the same goes for the relationship with Alma and Rocky. You know, the more we work with each other, the more we see each other, that helps bridge gaps. I think there's a lot of opportunities for leveraging common infrastructure between projects, especially between Fedora and CentOS, sharing best practices, avoiding, as Amy mentioned, avoiding duplicate work. There, there's, there's a lot of things where, especially if you look at packager work, a lot of the work like flows naturally from Fedora into Appel, into CentOS, uh, and like streamlining the process, making sure we have a good story so that packagers know what work needs to be done and how it needs to be done and where and how to move between these spaces in a way that feels comfortable. And so that if somebody is interested primarily in working on one of these projects, he's still able to touch upon the other areas if needed. And if people have questions, they know how to work with that. I think this is really important. Yeah, and for example, for Alma Rocky as well, I think there's few use cases that are not covered necessarily by CentOS Stream. So they have opportunity from something we can't necessarily do. They can do it uh, how they want. And I think this is a lot of value on the ecosystem. Uh, there's a lot of things that can be done. And I think it's sane to have a, a lot of projects doing different uh, kind of things. I assume Red Hat has no opinion on this. this <laughs> I can have an opinion, but yeah. this has been well covered. Right. Are there any more questions? Okay, we can wrap there. So I want to thank uh, the four of you for sitting up there uncomfortably.